Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast. We're going to be diving deep on the new world of short-term rentals and booking platforms and, and all the cool apps out there right now. We're, we're going to be talking to John uh, Stokinger uh, about uh, his, what he does for a living. We're going to talk about the industry. We're going to talk about his podcast, which is called the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast. This is going to air slightly after we interviewed your co-host of the show, and that was a great episode. We, we dove deep on a lot of subjects, and you guys are really... You guys are more not in the investor space yourselves, but you're more in like the facilitation of, of these bookings happening, right? So welcome to the show, John. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate you having me on the show. Excited. So can we dive in just kind of like what got you so interested in, in this kind of vertical, like this whole the whole app and booking platforms and and kind of property management vendor services i guess you'd say yeah absolutely i uh i, I stumbled in like most into into the space um I, w- I was looking for a remote job I, w- I was sick of traveling and commuting to work um i was looking for something remote and i i answered an add-on indeed and i actually came into the uh payment processing side of short-term rentals i was working for a company that uh, dealt with high risk um you know processing and and I worked there for a couple of years before transitioning over to um, a, a sales role at a property management software company. Very cool. And so, um, what, what's the evolution look like today of like the whole space? I mean, it seems like it's it's one of the most emerging markets out there. Everybody's on the investor side, which we we really deal with. It's like right. everybody's on. You know, everybody talks about VRBO and Airbnb, but there's there's like all these other platforms that are like gaining market share what does the space look like to you i mean from from a professionally managed space you know there which is a little bit different than say the airbnb space um or the verbo space for that matter um it's it's been we've been the short-term rental space has been here for for a long time i mean this was a you know before home away and before you know vrbo back then now it's verbo right it was um you know this has been going on since the 80s there was a, the vacation rental manager association or the verma uh which both myself and, and mateo are, are are part of um mateo you mentioned my co-host of the no bs short-term rental podcast we they've been doing this forever um but you know truly you know it was gaining a ton of momentum pre-covid but you know covid and you know that brought of a lot of attention to to the market and investing in the, for that matter because you know people didn't necessarily want to travel to an urban environment and get in a hotel and and they couldn't you know there was there's lots of restrictions on travel per se and even going to stay in in certain areas where you had to share elevators and stuff like that and like and you know workcations when you wanted to go ahead and work you know wanted to get out of the city but you you still needed to work so you wanted to go and, and you'd rent an airbnb or you'd rent a vacation rental for a month or so and work remotely and your family's in the other room and you're doing your thing um so it gained a lot of traction and you know the traction was already there but it gained a lot of you know eyes on uh, monetarily wise like how can can we capitalize on this and I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, like from the investor space, we're seeing a lot of like large funds and institutional buyers, they're buying single family homes. And now we're seeing like all these other companies in the space that are doing kind of the short term rental management for like these. But, but I kind of think what's going to happen, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I think you're going to see a, some of these institutional buyers are probably going to end up transitioning into uh, like a short term rental model as opposed to long term because the cash flow is so much better and i'm wondering if if anybody in that space so so they're going out right now and they're buying like single family homes like and just keeping them as long term but i think somebody's going to come out if they haven't already and start doing this in scale is there do you know any companies yeah there there are definitely some people that are doing in scale and you're seeing like multifamily you know units as well and i know you talk a lot about multifamily that are coming in and you know, it started off as that arbitrage model, right? And that, which obviously a lot of companies failed, you know, super aggressively um, when COVID hit because of that, because of the mass releases and all these things. But what you're seeing is like more of a hybrid model, like, like you know, certain areas or say 25% of the inventory, we're going to go ahead and make available to, to STR as opposed to, you know, month to month. 
And, you know, I think it's a 4X return um, overall, um, being able to go ahead and, and rent it out, you know, you know, three nights, four nights weekly, as opposed to month to month, you know, with that, you know, there's a lot of operational BS that goes into that, you know, and having a solid foundation, a solid tech stack to handle that, you know, not every, someone that is set up on a, say a month to month, like an app folio or something like that, they're, they're, they can't just transition easily into, into, a you know a short-term rental specifically it doesn't work that way no i i can definitely see like in anything big big companies come in and and they have the buying power and then they they're able to put the tax tech stack together so there's gonna be a lot more competition in the space like right now it seems like because single family homes are so fragmented it, it, it's it's hard but there will be companies that prevail that do this on a large level so it'd be interesting to see how this all plays out and then what that does to the kind of like the mom and pop operators um but I, but i also think that's the location wise too because some so they won't want to be in certain markets that the mom and pops are in i i think that you know the mom and pops and say in, in vacation destinations have been successful and that's how it all started you know there there wasn't a lot of investment it was you know it's you know jim and sally had you know 20 units that you know turned into 150 units turned into 200 units and now we're just seeing a ton of m a and it's just coming in like we want to add this to our portfolio we want to add this to our portfolio and you know they're they're being successful where we're seeing you know i see a lot of purpose built short-term rentals um in specific markets which are it's fantastic and you know but what people an investment I, I think I've done a little consulting uh, with for this and what investment looks in. They see like the shiny things. They don't necessarily look deep at the regulations or the tax remittance and all the different things that go into behind the scenes that these you know mom and pops have been doing for you know have grown with this. They've done it for twenty years, thirty years in certain, some instances, and there's a, there's a really steep learning curve to be successful in this space. Um, you know, they're for sure, you know, the, you know, investment with the right guidance is going to do well, but a lot of these, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of these, you know, municipalities in different, you know, areas where the regulations are absolutely crushing these investors and the, these new to short-term rental because, you know, they, Hey, I'm going to move here and I'm going to buy this and I'm going to, I'm going to start this, you know, SDR company. And then now that, you know, the regulation said, Oh, you can't do, you know, we're only 30 days or, or more now. We can't actually do short-term rentals. So it's long-term stays. So why did you even invest in that market? You know, it's interesting. Yeah, and that's kind of the scary part, I think, for a lot of people. It's like, what happens when regulation happens and you're like, have five properties and you're it's just you and you put all your life savings into these and now they're saying, oh, well, you there's only, we're only issuing X amount of permits and you're only going to get one. And so that means you're four after turns in long-term and it's long-term rentals that they don't cash flow. Right. So there could be definitely, I mean, in anything that's emerging, there's always going to be change. It's just like, how do you stay on top of it? And I mean, obviously try not to buy properties in HOAs because you know that you're most likely, yeah. unless it's a purpose built investment, you're going to, you're going to run into that. Can you talk a little bit about Hopper? Like, uh, I, you know, when I went on and Originally, Hopper started as a company to, it, it appears to get like the best, cheapest airfare, right? right? That's And then when did when did they kind of bring in this vertical uh, on the short-term space and how does it actually operate? Versus yeah, so, like, mm -hmm. yeah, great question. Um, the Hopper came up, you know, Hopper's been in business for years. It was flights, hotels, and cars started out as flights. Um, they actually have more data, flight data than any other company in the world. Um, so they've been collecting this data since the onsite of, of Hopper and they're able to go ahead and offer different things, you know, like price freeze and cancel for different, different FinTech options. And that's, you know, and you hit the nail on the head that you said cheapest, right? You know, we, we offer the lowest price for, we, we try to do a meter beat, um, for, for the industries and for those different verticals where Hopper Homes comes in. We, uh, we spun up this vertical um, under great leadership, you know, started thinking about it early, about a year ago. And I got hired with them in October um, and we went live with Hopper Homes in January of, of this year. Um, so we've been live for whatever, six months now um, with you know, 2 million homes um, and adding, you know, more and more inventory daily. 
So the market share you're going to probably go after first is the market share of travelers that are using the the booking platform for air travel. And then they're going to get it's going to be like an all in one service, essentially like, hey, you need a car, you need you need a, yeah. you need a, like, that's pretty darn smart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're building a, a super app for travel, um, uh, you know, kind of basing it on of some of these uh, more of an Asian, you know, super app kind of inspired model. Um, and you'll see if, you, if you're familiar with the app today and you look at it, even in a month from now, it's going to look different. We're, we're really trying to go ahead in a one stop shop, building a little bit of gamification, building in a little bit of things. Um, where you know you're not going to want to go ahead because you know you're going to get the lowest price. You know you're getting the best customer service. You know you, you book a flight to to wherever you book a flight, and then up up pops on the app. You know, hey, what about a hotel? Or in, in this instance, what about a vacation rental? Um, you know, and and then you know from there, you know, well, here's your car rental. And what are some of the other things we're doing? We actually partnered with Capital One, and we are the the engine behind their their rewards program for travel. So if you're a, one of the 40 million Capital One card users and you want to book travel uh, using your rewards points, it's all through Hopper. Is Hopper International then? Like, so if, like I'm going to Mexico on vacation in August and I haven't booked my flights yet. I can go on and book my flights now. 100%. And then what about, but the um but Hopper Homes, is, is that established yet in other countries or not really? And the, there's certain homes in, in Mexico. Um, our focus is definitely on North America first, but we do have some inventory in Mexico for sure. I would take a look. And then is your inventory like, it, does it have to be, could a mom and pop operator put their home on Hopper? Or is it more institutional grade type of uh, product? We're, we're working on that. Okay. It's, uh, it's a focus of ours. I mean, truly we, our you know, I look at and we as a as a as a homes vertical look at um, the market and we see where searches are coming in. And Miami is by far our, our top market. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to travel to Miami, right, and, and book a vacation rental. Um, you know, we're getting to the point and we're we're developing a way for hosts to also onboard uh, with Hopper um, and get their inventory on Hopper. Right now, we are only professionally managed. Um, inventory through so those that are using you know a you know a property manager, but in the future that's going to look a little different. Wow, that's going to be great. So it's going to give um, consumers other options than the two or three that are out there right now. Yeah, um, I mean the goal is is to to be you know when when you think of uh, vacation rental travel, you think of Verbo, you think of you know you think of booking, you think of Airbnb, you think of Hopper. That's the goal. I could definitely see it because like for me, I don't like to get in the weeds when I'm planning a trip. So I would like, I used hotels.com for a long time just to book my hotel stay. And I like the fact that I get 10, I book 10 nights, I get one for free and I'd yeah. stick with them because it's like, oh, oh, I, I get this one night for free, but it's true. I mean, and I just felt like there was a level at the, at the time I was using it, there was a level of transparency where I felt like I was getting a decent rate compared to what I would get if I booked directly from that per se hotel. Um, and so I used, yeah. I used it the same as well. I was, I was big on uh, hotels.com. Get that, get that 10th night free. And then I actually transitioned to hotels tonight. Um, and then that seemed to be the best uh, for me, especially for business travel. But yeah, I, I, I get that. And the, the interesting thing with the Hopper app is to you earn carrot cash, which is in app currency. Uh, so every time you book a flight, you earn a little a percentage back. Every time you book anything, you earn some carrot cash, which is dollar, you know, it's actual dollars so you can go ahead and bring your the flight prices down or the hotel or whatnot yeah that's that's cool i'm gonna definitely use on this trip just because i've i haven't been flying as much lately because of covid and i work out of my house so it's just right. been, but, but yeah that's definitely um I, I think that that makes the the easier booking process is going to win the game i think like where people just know it's transparent you're getting the best pricing I can go on and book the flight. I then can find, look for where I want to stay, whether it's Las Vegas or Miami or wherever. I, well, I live in Las Vegas, but, um, and so, so how are, how, how does Hopper Homes, is it mostly then like hotels on there right now, but it's going to be transitioning to like the vacation-ish rental properties? Or do you get like large vacation rental property managers that are onboarding their, their, their inventory? Yeah, right. You know, so right now we have, you know, we have tons of we, 
hotels and homes are two separate verticals on on hopper so you push a different button to go into the hotels as you are you know we have over two million homes on hopper homes and they're anything from you know one two bedroom condos with you know with the kitchen and you know bath that kind of thing or um or they are you know seven eight nine bedroom like beach houses um you know we see right now the hopper demographic is it's more of a, uh, you know, it's an app friendly demographic as opposed to say, you know, uh, because we, we just haven't gone. We're more of an, an Airbnb demographic, um, but, you know, of those 2 million homes, a decent amount of them, I mean, more than 50% of them are actually, you know, professionally managed properties. Yeah, that's pretty cool that you guys just, I mean, it's really in a year's time, you've made huge, huge progress with this, with this vertical. So it must be exciting. Must be exciting for you to to yeah, watch this growth. It's it's pretty exciting. We I mean we have a long ways to go. We we understand it. We're uh, we're you know we we have very high aspirations, and it's exciting to see the growth. But we also aren't 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 content with where we are. We we have some uh, we have some you know some co- competition we'd love to dethrone in the future. And then what do you, what exactly is your kind of specialty within the company there? What do you, what do you, what's your day to day look like for them? Yeah. Great question. My, my day to day is, is getting direct supply. So, so a lot of that home so that we have right now is, is actually aggregated inventory. So when we turn the app on, we actually had inventory to turn on. So it's, it's inventory we purchase. It's purchased from some of our competition, actually here, here's a bunch of, of inventory that isn't maybe uh, doing so well on our platforms. Let's we'll sell it to you. So basically you're a reseller, right? Uh, so we, uh, of, of those 2 million homes, when we turned it on, a lot of that was aggregated inventory, my job and our team on the direct supply team is to go ahead and get, you know, direct supply. So supply that we connect directly to a property management software or through a channel manager, um, like uh, a Rentals United or a Nextpax, and these are these are things that property managers use to connect with all the different channels. Oh wow, that's pretty interesting. So you you're, you're basically have targeted people. You're approaching companies and introducing the platform to them and the benefits to them. Yeah. And, and what what's what's really the? I mean, I I think the benefit is probably pretty clear. You're going to get more eyeballs and more bookings, right? Is that the bottom line? The bottom line is you know we're, you're going to. You know, Hopper is going to meet or meet or beat all the prices out there. Um, we are, you know, the home, the Hopper app, you know, has 80 million downloads app. We're the number one uh, downloaded travel app in North America last year and, and are trending to do so again this year. Um, we're adding 2.5 to 2.8 million new downloads a month. So we're we're growing. Um, as far as, you know, so we have that 80 million closed user group plus a capital one, 40 million closed user group. And these are, you know, these are, you know, eyes that are, aren't necessarily on your inventory today, you know, the, and we're not, Hopper does not compete with marketing dollars of the property managers. So you're not going to see Hopper today in say Miami as like, you know, you search up vacation rentals in Miami on Google, you're not going to see Hopper home you know, today. You're not going to go ahead and see them. Um, whereas like Verbo and Airbnb, of course, do those. So we can come into a property manager and say, Hey, we're not competing with your dollars. We're an app. You know, you're going to see Hopper commercials on, on you know streaming services or on TikTok and that kind of thing. That's where you're going to see Hopper on Insta, Insta. but you're not going to go ahead and see us in your search engine. We're, so we're not competing for the marketing dollars and these property managers are spending anywhere from five to 10% to acquire new guests through pay-per-click and SEO anyway. So that's the cost of acquisition to get someone anyways. So we ask for that upfront from them and then we mark up from there. Um, so it really keeps it, it enables us to meet or beat the competition. And so you're getting a lot of growth on social channels. It sounds like. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty amazing. That's, I mean, that's the way I just listened to Gary Vanderchuk. Uh, he was speaking at a conference and it's like, He's like, you got to be on TikTok, you know, and everybody, a lot of people, influencers or, you know, people that have service-based businesses, it's like, they like don't understand the power of these platforms. And it's like, you guys are living proof that these platforms are like people, where else people can like, I mean, just the advertising, like, you know, you could, I could see like a beach in a video and then all of a sudden, you know, book, boom, boom, boom. It's like, it's. And it's free, you know. That's the best part. These platforms are free. It's it's insane. I, I saw a stat, and I wish I had it on the tip of my tongue right now, talking about the the hours of videos watched on TikTok compared to Netflix. 
and it was in the trillions of hours and TikTok had something in it. I'm murdering these numbers, right? These are the incorrect numbers, but it was something like 30 million, 30 trillion hours and Netflix had 5 trillion. It was something ridiculous like that, how they exponentially like more hours of video was watched on TikTok as opposed to Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I realized YouTube was huge and obviously social media um, and like even my YouTube channel. People now are going, oh, Bo is in the lending space. If I'm an investor or business owner, I'm going to book a call with him and then I you know, give him advice or maybe I can facil right. facilitate their loan. It works like a charm. Um, and now I'm like, okay, well, this is like smart. So let's like 10 X the growth of the other platforms like TikTok and Instagram. And like, it's cause it's the way marketing is done and, and everything is moving so fast now that people need to kind of like get, get abreast of what's going on. And it's interesting from the lending perspective, like I get a lot of people reaching out, Hey, I'm buying this, this boutique motel and, uh, we're going to rebrand. We're going to put it on, you know, Verbo Airbnb or whatever. And it's interesting to see like, and then they're they're kind of like um, they're buying these smaller boutique motels, and then they're buying another one, and they're branding in the same way. So they're building their own like huge hotel, boutique hotel line, yeah. you know. And it's like super smart. It's like they're get because nobody, no institutional buyers want to buy these thirteen you know units on a beach in Florida. But like individual investors are like, man, this thing will cash flow huge, and they're buying from mom and pops. And they're rebranding. They're Make it a nice. Yeah, and, and it's that it's that eclectic stay. It's that niche stay where you can really curate it for you know for your traveler. You know, like I love like the these the, the mom and pop hotels that are like each room is rebranded as like a different experience. It's not even all the same, um, and you can really see. And then you know, as a as an operator, you could go, oh, these you know of my twelve units, these eight are really crushing. Um, and they're whatever that that niche is, but these these four aren't. So let's go ahead and rebrand these again and get them all to crush. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. The I, I guess for advice for investors in the in the short term rental space is understand your competition, understand your markets, um, understand the tech stack you need to go ahead and and invest in to be successful if you want to do it on your own. And and I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Um, you know, if you see yourself going to be in, you know, 10, 10 homes or more or 10 units, 10 doors or more, really look at maybe investing in it, but, but hiring a property manager that's already doing it, that's taking like 25% or something, but you just sit back and you just start scaling. You know, you're not worrying about the, the housekeeping. You're not worrying about the maintenance, the upkeep. You're not worrying about the booking. You're just going ahead and be like, I'm going to buy this home. Here's a, here's a reputable property manager in this, in this you know, this community that's been, been doing this a long time, you know, do your research, you know, and don't necessarily also look at, say, that uh, that property management company and say, you know, they're 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 going to charge, you know, this one's going to charge me 30 percent, but this one's going to charge 25. I'm going to go with them. Well, it, it might not necessarily be the right, you know, you know, good things cost money. And if yeah. you don't have your hands off and you don't have to worry and you can just go ahead and turn and burn and, and then go ahead and acquire some you're going to get a quicker ROI with some of these things. Like if you want to scale quickly, it might be worth doing it. And, but if you're building your own company, you want to go and do it, like make sure you got the right tech stack, make sure you're, you're really in, you like understand your market as far as, you know, regulations and, and understand where the regulation trends are going even around your community, because it, today it might not be an issue, but in two years from now there, you know, it might be an issue. So, and, and when you do become a, an operator or a homeowner that, that is invested in that, make yourself known uh, to your local municipality and to the, the people on the, that, that, that make the decisions in your community. And understand, hey, I'm a, I'm a vacation rental pr professional. I just want to introduce myself. We just went ahead and put these you know, five homes up. And you know, if you have any questions about what we're doing, you know, be an ally to them. Because when you know, the proverbial you know, who hits the fan here um, in the future, like they're going to reach out to you and go, oh, this guy knows what he's a guy or gal knows what they're talking about. Or I have questions. Let's talk to them. Maybe they can point me in the right direction instead of just making like gut decisions and that end up screwing you in the future. Yeah, no, I love what you said. And also too, like my friend, he quickly scaled to, I mean, not a big block, but he's third like luxury properties. 
so he's you know doing pretty good on rev he, he went from zero to five properties in in like 14 months um and they're all single family homes and doing very well and he you know he first got a, a like a virtual assistant that, that had skill sets like booking and stuff but he's you know i'm watching him being frustrated and frustrating at some point i'm like man once you get enough properties and you realize like hey what if i gave up a little bit of money and had somebody manage this whole thing then you're completely passive right, right. versus running it as the business and like so it just depends on where you want to be if you want to build the business versus like invest and invest and then turn it to like a, a good operator and even if if you're paying 20 or 25 percent what are they doing on your gross revenue that you weren't doing because they got more eyeballs on there got they got their link with better booking platforms so a lot of people won't let go but i i do think that's like for me i you know i don't have any short term right now but when i do my first short term i'll probably run it myself just to learn the stacks like okay price labs okay um uh, air dna air dna air dna how am i doing compared to what they're saying right so i can understand trends a little bit more in the space What's in my actual occupancy levels? How am I turning the properties? And at some point, it's like, okay, I had enough here. Like, let's just, it's, it's, it's doing well, but I'd rather, if I'm making five grand a month net profit on this one house, and instead I'm making 4,000 and I don't have to do anything, that seems a right. lot better for me because time is the biggest commodity uh, that we, the, you know, the most value that I weigh. So that, that was really good advice. And, I, and there's a lot of emerging companies that are 100 percent focused in this vertical so you might as well at least see uh if you didn't want to run it as the actual business so that was good really good feedback you're listening to the investor financing podcast we'll be right back after this break hi this is bo Eckstein, host of the investor financing podcast i appreciate you checking out our channel on this podcast we talk about real estate investing financing business lending and acquiring and expanding your business. I'm sure you will find some videos here that will help you build your business empire. There's a lot to see. Take your time and make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks again. You're based where? You're in actually Fort Wayne? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, I was I was going to buy a bunch of properties there a couple of years back. I should have because it's been the market's actually crushed. And there's like a lot of good positive things about Fort Wayne market. I own in uh, other parts of Indiana. Um, I never ended up buying in Fort Wayne, but I still get leads because I, I set up a, a lead generation what, for motivated sellers, so I get leads for sellers. But that's that market's done really well over the last a lot of a lot of job growth there too. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it consistently in the like top place to live in in uh, in Indiana, and it's in the you know it's in the top fifty places to to live in the U.S. Um, it's been we moved here five years ago we bought right in the city uh we bought a, a 1928 colonial revival in a national historic district of the city and it's uh the cost of living here is pretty phenomenally low well that's um, what I, that's what i was going to say <laughs> like when you said you wanted something where you could work remote and that's pretty smart hey work remote crush it um but like if you were living in san francisco versus in fort wayne it's such a big difference of lifestyle like six figures yeah. in fort wayne is like you're a king in san francisco you're like barely making it <laughs> yeah you're barely affording uh like a one-bedroom studio we're gonna see we're gonna see more and more of this because it makes sense i mean other than the fact that i don't like the cold indiana is like one of the most beautiful states out there i mean it's green mountains you talk about having a lot of places lakes fishing and and culture uh, indiana is really cool i dig it um and if it didn't snow and wasn't cold i, I could live there <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you said you're out of you're out of Houston. Area? No, no, I live in uh, Las Vegas. I live in Henderson. Oh, in Vegas, right? But I grew up in the Bay Area mostly, and I li lived outside of San Francisco. And three years ago, before COVID came, I was just like, I need to like, I had a place in Las Vegas, like a vacation place, and I'd come and stay. And I'm like, I got to move here, right? Because it just makes more sense. I work out of my house. The housing is a quarter of the price, and it's same thing. We're like an emerging market. We're blowing up. A lot of people are moving here because the cost of living is better um, and that kind of thing. So it, it makes sense. And, and, and uh, I was just interviewing another investor, STR investor, small. He's got 30, uh, 30 doors, but he's really sharp. And he what he's doing is he's buying and um, he's not doing really vacation destinations. He's doing kind of not urban, but kind of like suburban, kind of infill, like normal houses. 
And a lot of my investors, they're like, oh, I want to buy the biggest house I can because I can get the most people in there. He's like, no, he did it, does it completely opposite. It's like, I want like two bedroom or two people max. And what he's finding is that now people are staying like over 30 days because he's not really, people are, are becoming more like nomadic and he's getting more of those type of travelers and he's not in a vacation destination. So it's also knowing your market, right? Like, right. And so I've been looking here in Las Vegas, like, what are my opportunities here in this space? We're dealing with the strip, we're dealing with hotels, but I could do the business travelers, traveling nurses. I could do uh, people that just don't want to stay on the strip and they want to go do the outdoor stuff. So it's it's interesting. The Vegas market is is super interesting for the for the SCR world um, because we we look at it uh, from Hopper and it's it's a top destination as far as where searches go. But uh, you know, as far as me getting inventory there, it's really hard. Um, actually, I should be getting a contract in today for uh, 400 units in uh, actual SDR units in Vegas. Um, pretty excited about that. But overall, um, and mostly it's individual hosts or like super hosts doing the Airbnb thing, but not necessarily set up through uh, running a property management software and this kind of thing. So it's a really, for for us and Hopper today, before we can you know, self onboard with host can self onboard, we don't really have the opportunity to go ahead and, and crush there. Um, with that said, you know, th- there's a ton of opportunity. So many people want to go ahead and stay there and, and, you know, or stay close to the strip, but not on it. And don't, you know, we're actually going to be there in October for our VRMA uh, international conference. Um, we're there almost every other year. Uh, imagine that. Right. Uh, so we, we got a big, big show coming up there, actually doing some podcast stuff there. Uh, in while we're in town so i'm pretty excited about that yeah so that i'm intrigued to, to do it here because just like not that you can't do it remote like the guy i interviewed the other day he's he lives in brazil and colombia for the last five years he's originally from california runs 30 plus stores um and growing and he's doing it all remote and you know it's great to see all this different these different like sub verticals within the space and it's interesting to interview people like yourself so you're getting kind of i'm getting like a full grasp of the whole industry because most people don't realize like you made a valuable point vacation rentals have been here forever right but everybody's it's like the new emerging trend but it's really not it's just like this new app that has made the difference um airbnb blew it up you know and i you know as as their our number one competition you know it's it's even hard to say you know they did it chesky chesky put out a, a an amazing product and i mean verbo and homeway was there before him but airbnb really made it it's like tissues and kleenex right like it's a like an, i'm gonna go stay in airbnb maybe they're staying in an airbnb maybe they're staying at a verbo or they're staying at a hopper maybe they're staying at a vacation rental that's run by a property management company but they're still saying hey i got an airbnb in vegas or i got an airbnb <sighs> For us, us, those of us in the space, we're like, oh, let's say vacation rental, let's say short term rental, but is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, but but also, you know, there's always the first in. Yeah, they can be the like. Well, they weren't the first in, but but also, I think evolution happens, and like your experience on your site is going to be a lot different because it's all inclusive, um, and most people don't want to spend time go, going back and to a bunch of platforms. They want to just like, okay, cool. We did this. All right. We know the dates. Now it's going to like, the dates are saved in the app. The, in the app's going to automatically like find the best available properties in our price range. And like, okay, cool. Do you want to, do you want a car? Uh, yeah, I'll take a car. Um, yeah. eventually it'd be cool if like you could integrate with like a Toro, right? Like, and then that would, we are, we are, you can, you can get Toro through, yeah. through Hopper right now. Yeah, because everybody drives those like slingshots. Those like three wheel. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm going to Vegas. I want to get a slingshot. Like, then you know the next evolution is like, what activities are you doing, right? And they already do that too. Like, what shows? What do, this and that? Yeah, so it's, like, it's it's all on the horizon too. It's uh yeah. So that's that's exciting. There's not there's nothing off the table. Uh, let's just say for you know the travel experience. Um, with Hopper, you know, we'll, we'll look at everything that if it makes sense, that's a whole point of uh, the super app. If you can do everything in there to you know, make it fun, make it, make it, you know, easy, you know, the a great UI, great UX. Um, that's the plan. Awesome. Well, John, this has been awesome. I don't want to take all your day off because we could talk about this industry forever and I'm learning and it's exciting guys. If you want to find more about John, I would suggest you go to his podcast. Uh, you can go to the 
the no BS short term rental podcast.com. Uh, you can search it on YouTube. You can search it on any lips, all, pod- all the channels. And then, um, John appreciates you. Any closing remarks? No, I, I appreciate you having me on a on an investment podcast as as one that doesn't do much investing but knows the space pretty well. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, and you know to the, and I encourage you all if you want to learn more about the uh, the space, you know, definitely go and check out our podcast. Yeah, well, I think that's how you learn. That's why I love bringing on different kind of guests. Like I interviewed a bunch of people that buy multifamily, this and that, and they kind of get boring after a while. And not that not that they're amazing entrepreneurs but it's like i think life is about learning all these verticals so you know like this has intrigued me and i feel like i'm learning as i go like okay like i'm kind of understanding the space a little bit more and like you know you can have a great vacation rental and you take terrible pictures of the property and you don't put it on the right platforms and you don't like advertise it the way it needs to be and you're not going to get the bookings right right versus like you you spend the extra bucks you get a professional photographer you know, potentially you do like a video tour of the property, which I think, I don't know if anybody's doing that in the space, but I would be showcasing mine on YouTube. Like there, uh, there's, a, there's this company I worked, I did a brief, uh, and I, I know we're trying to wrap this up here, but yeah. we, I did a brief uh, stint with them and they do an amazing, so they do the, uh, like an interactive floor plan for vacation rentals. The company's called True Place, T-R-U Place. And they uh, do, they're, they're really big in the vacation and the uh, real estate market around DC in that area. But as far as um, they might have an Austin, I'm not sure exactly, but they do an interactive floor plan where you can go and hover over the floor plan and then all the photos will show up. Well, they'll also do a 3D tour add-on where you can go ahead and jump into the floor plan and walk around with it. It's pretty, it's nice. Yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, that's the way I, the way of the future. Oh, I was going to, I was going to bring up something else. I was, oh, 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 what's the, the other cool thing I just saw the other day. Oh, there's another app. If you have like an extra backyard, uh, or, or backyard space that you can like rent it out to people that want to walk their dogs and play with their dogs. And I thought that was kind of cool. Like, I like, it's like, it's like a Airbnb for backyards. There's one for pools too. And then if you just want to go use someone's pool. Um, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, uh, but we looked at, we don't have a pool here in the city, but we looked, it was really hot summer last year and, uh, we looked heavily looked into it. We almost pulled the trigger on it. Um, but I, I wish I had that tip of my tongue, but yeah, there's a, there's an, you know, Airbnb for pools. And then there's also that, what's the website, if you know where it's like for cool destinations, like if you need a place to shoot like a video or like a house to, it's, it's like a booking platform for like. And I just saw this pop up too. So the world's evolving. But like if, if, if I was going to do like a, if I needed like a, uh, a place for a business meeting, you could like book on there. Or if I needed right. like a house to do like a MTV music video or something like. So, but it'll be interesting. I mean, a lot of these may not become profitable. Many of them may or may not. So it's interesting to see all these kind of like pop ups and, 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 but like the the Uber of, of the worlds are changing the worlds. That's the crazy thing. It's like you know Uber, then there's Toro, and then there's Airbnb, and then there's this, and then there's that, and and Hopper. That, and there's Hopper, of course, <laughs> the number one most downloaded app in the space. So that's crazy. So congratulations to you and your company on success, and I appreciate you spending time with us and giving us kind of a inside look on the industry found it very fascinating and uh, I look forward to playing around on the, on your app and listening more to your podcast. So thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.